I'm giving you a step-by-step -step guide to boost your new level 40 character to be strong enough to run with the big dogs in the Division 2. In less than three hours, you'll have the tools to take on the most challenging content and take the lead in kills and damage even in legendary difficulty. You heard that right. Best of all, you'll be able to do it without a stacked watch. Sounds unreal? Whether you're a new or returning player, this is the fast track solution you've been searching for. Let's do it. And if you don't know, one of the most common questions I receive from new players is, I've just hit level 40, what now? It's a valid question. Surprisingly, despite nearly six years of gameplay, a clear roadmap for endgame success is still missing until now. Let's cut to the chase and dive right in. Your primary objective in the endgame is to boost your character's power to maximum heights. So to kickstart this journey, your primary focus will be on building your tinkering library, crafting essential builds for key content, accumulating resources, and maximizing XP gains. Stay on task and everything else will fall in place. I've started a fresh account to demonstrate exactly how to achieve this. By following this guide, step by step, you'll walk away with six exotics and three powerful builds that dominate the game. And by the end of this video, you'll be fully equipped to join a legendary stronghold mission as the underdog, only to emerge as the leader in kills and damage. Okay, step one, this is a fresh faced recruit with a brand new watch. So in this step, we're gonna focus on rapidly adding the core stats for gear in our library. That's the damage damage, armor, and skill tiers. And then we're gonna add the immediate key talents for the weapons, backpack, and chest. I don't expect a lot of new players will know what those are, so I have an exact list for you. In this stage alone, we're gonna unlock four exotics, one of which is a guaranteed top tier exotic we must have. Finally, we will be farming for a build that will put you in the key arena to fill your stash with amazing gear. What's really cool is we're gonna be doing all these steps simultaneously. While that's happening, you will also be leveling up your season rewards track in the background for even more rewards. We're just gonna consider all that bonus at this stage. So this new player came up to me at the White House and said, hey, I just started playing the Division Two. Do you have any tips for me? I was feeling charitable. So I said, sure thing. Rule number one, always stay in cover. Got it. What's rule number two? replied the noob. Me? Well, actually, rule number one is probably enough for now. I didn't want to overwhelm the poor sucker. Got it. Stay in cover. Anything else? Noob replies. So I said, yeah, if you see a guy in a hazmat suit, don't try to shake his hand. <laughs> I don't think you got it. You see, the guy in the hazmat suit is- I got it. We really got a lot to get through and really don't need the interruptions. Okay, first, complete your SHD requisition project for the free exotic and named item. To do this, we need to quickly grab some basic resources. So open up your project to determine what you need. Then zoom in on your map to find the resource node. Go for the easy ones to travel to and take. Minimize engagement here if you can. It's in and out that we're looking for. I left my map on normal difficulty and basically got god rolls from this project. And now we got our first exotic. If for some reason you are seriously lacking in all the resource categories, it's okay. Just don't go do extra farming right now. You can do this project at any time and we will be collecting resources along the way that will get you enough to complete this project before day's end. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, second, we need to slap together basically a starter build. So don't worry about the details here, okay? This is just gonna be to get us rolling and the content's gonna be quite easy. So the most important thing is to try to get to six skill tiers. These will be enough to make your skills strong for what we're gonna be doing. If you have Wyvern, Hannah Yu, or any other skill brand that makes sense, go ahead and equip it. Otherwise, put on whatever you can to get those six skill tiers. For the secondary attributes, aim for anything with skill damage, headshot damage, and skill haste over miscellaneous stats. You're going to need a good assault rifle. Any assault rifle with the instinct talent is even better if you can get your hands on that. You're not going to have any crits at this stage, so avoid a weapon talent that requires that. So just grab any AR you can. If you don't have any ARs, look in the vendors. But don't trouble yourself with the details of the model. Your skills are going to be doing most of the work. But if you happen to come across any of these, no, they're the community favorites. Don't let these details be a sticking point. You won't be running any of this gear for long. 
and we will be tossing all of this gear away very soon. Okay, this part is optional, but recommended. It's important. If you don't have the year run pass, you will need to do projects to be able to use your new specializations. Frankly, these are super grindy and sort of a drag. If you get the year run pass, you can unlock these right away. And then from there, you just need to level them up, which is pretty straightforward. I personally am not going to do it because this is a scratch account I created just for this demonstration. But on my main account, I did buy it and it was worth it despite the cost. So keep in mind during this demonstration, I will be playing at a deficit of power because I'm not demonstrating with the proper specialization I'd really be using. But we're still going to kick butt. It's not a big deal. So if you have the year run pass, equip technician and aim to unlock the extra skill tier as soon as it comes available. Then assault rifle damage. To do this, you just have to level up your character while the specialization is equipped to earn points. 2,000 premium credits. Holy moly. Hold on while I kidnap a tourist and steal their kidney. Okay, here's the next step. We're gonna do this real quick. You need a few E credits to be able to recalibrate gear and we're cash poor. So we're gonna avoid recalibrating as much as possible at first, but things are gonna go quickly and we need to make sure you have some pocket change. You should have one available project bounty on the map. Complete that for 10 to 15K in E credits. Mine was on hard difficulty, but take whatever you can get. Your skills are gonna do all the work. So just stay in cover. Let's talk about your junk. You're going to be getting a lot of unwanted gear through this session. It's important you don't trash or deconstruct or leave behind any unwanted items. Mark pieces with key talents and god rolls for donation. Everything else needs to go to your stash. That's so important. Yes, even garbage gear. Do not deconstruct it. All right, let's kick it into gear. So go to the summit. We're going to spend about an hour in here to complete 15 floors. In this time, we will get two exotics, one of which is the capacity a very important exotic for the end game and one of your builds. At the same time, we will get the starter pieces for your key builds. You will be farming for striker's gear and palisades gear using the custom targeted loot system. Here's the shopping list. You will need one striker piece for each loadout slot and you will need palisades for as many loadout slots as you can. Two must be for the chest piece. Finally, the third goal is to amass stats, talents, junk gear and resources to level up our build and the library for the tinkering system. Go to the elevator and set the difficulty to hard and then choose these five directives. Fog of war, no regen, pistolero or ammo hoarders, special ammo and ragers. Each directive adds 25% more XP. So you're getting 125% more XP this way. More importantly, directives increase your chance of getting targeted loot by three to four percent per directive up to 10 percent and now set your targeted loot to strikers gear so don't worry about the directives again your skills are going to be doing a lot of the work and the enemies are so squishy they're going to be dying really quickly to get the capacitor exotic assault rifle you need to complete five summit challenges so we need to set this up and manage it as we climb and it's pretty easy each of these challenges will reward you with great xp on top of everything you're doing in the summit, as well as summit caches and more targeted loot. All vital for a poor agent in need, right? The fifth challenge completed in this run will give you the capacitor and a summit cache. The summit caches give you the elements you need for the tinkering bench to make your gear stronger. Pick any of the ones you want, but my recommendations are all assured to be done within the 15th floor limit that we're going for. Ideally, you got crate crazy, the armor one, sidearm specialist, quick climber, and distinguished dethrone once you get to floor 10. The summit is about climbing to the top as fast as you can. The factions will change along the way and you will encounter a variety of objectives you must complete to progress forward. Things like interacting with the computer to disable something or destroy a server or something like that. Just keep an eye on the objective tell at the top of the screen. Every second floor after you exit an elevator will have a hidden key you must grab to open the cache. Do not miss these. They can be hidden behind doors, at the end of dead ends, in random hallways. The elevators are checkpoints that save your progress. When you die, it will take you back to the last elevator save. Your 15 floor progress that you need is measured by how many floors you clear not by how many you actually climb. Once you complete the 15 floors, you're gonna complete your summit project. That's a free exotic cache, 
a whole level of XP, a recalibration cache, and a random crafting blueprint. All very vital at this stage. Just before you reach an elevator, there will be loot rooms where you encounter resources and the stash for that key. Don't miss these treasure troves. And the 10th floor will be a boss floor. So overall, you're looking for six striker pieces, one for each gear slot. You don't really care what the stats are. I know you want to, but don't. But if crit chance, crit damage, headshot damage, and skill damage show up, those are what you're hoping for as secondary attributes. But don't invest extra time looking for those stats in the summit. It's just to start a build. And remember, don't deconstruct anything. Junk goes to stash. It took me about an hour to clear 15 floors. I got all the gear I needed and more, including the two exotics. Since you're new, it might take a little bit longer because these activities inside you're not familiar with yet. Anyways, once you're done, head back to DC open up all your caches, search through the inventory and mark God rolls and anything with these key talents for donation, especially be on the lookout for high level cores like armor, weapon damage, and skill tiers. Put on the striker's chest and striker's backpack, then put on your two best pieces of palisades, then fill in the rest with striker's gear. Choose core stats over everything else. You should have two blue cores and four red weapon damage cores. As far as gear stats, crits, headshot damage, handling, or regen are ideal if you happen to have those. Because you have the striker chest and backpack, you already have two of the strongest talents in the game and no longer need to worry about those, making your job a lot easier. And these will be giving you up to 200% amplified damage, the best damage type around. Now, you just need to worry about your weapons. Search through your weapons to put together this assault rifle shotgun combo. Any high RPM shotgun will work if you don't have the ACS. If you don't have any shotguns yet, put whatever and move on. Know that the capacitor assault rifle is one of the strongest in the game, even if you're not running skills. So if you don't have any good assault rifle yet, just use that. Otherwise, refer to the weapon combo list and don't fixate on this. You're gonna be upgrading very fast now. As far as mods, best is protection from elites right now. Otherwise, crit chance, crit damage, headshot damage, or skill haste. For specialization, put on survivalist and assign assault rifles and shotguns. For skills, put on a revive hive and a shield. Save this build to your loadouts and name it countdown build. You should have watch points ready to assign. Go crit chance, armor, reload speed, and skill damage first. Use scavenge points for E-credits because mostly we're gonna be doing in the tinkering station, when it comes to cost, things that are gonna cost you, most of it's gonna be recalibrating. And if you look at the cost to recalibrate something, what resources it uses, it's mostly heavy on E-credits, as you can see. That's still like the biggest bulk. It, it costs more than E-credits. Basically, ceramics, electronics, and E-credits are gonna be what you're looking for. So I'm gonna be using those points up early to load up on my watch so that I can optimize my build quickly. Move everything else from your inventory into your stash. Just with this simple setup and crappy roll, we're already able to keep up with the big dogs in countdown and we're just getting started we're ready for step two and now it's time to upgrade our build by farming countdown this is a casual eight person game mode and we use it to quick farm gear named items and exotics our goal is to use it to upgrade and complete our three key builds. Build up our library and resources. There are only three things you need to know about Countdown. Follow the pack. Sticking with the group makes things extremely easy and keeps you alive. Countdown will seem confusing at first, but just follow the group. The second thing is you need the right build. Check. The third thing is you need lots of room in your inventory. Check. This is a grab and go game mode. Don't stop to review your drops. And remember, don't deconstruct anything. All junk goes to stash. All right, to kick it off, go to the chopper and match make on challenging. When you get in, if you get in, I've been known to kick noobs on Jump Street. First thing you do is set your targeted loot. You will be farming Striker, Palisades, and Brazos. Start with Striker. Farm in that order. Okay, as a quick overview, the first thing the group does is eliminate the hunters. They are deadly, and as a new player, just remember to keep your distance. And to stay the f*** out of my way. Also, they will disable your skills and can heal themselves. Be a support player here, not the tip of the spear. After four hunters are eliminated, and you grab the dog tags that they drop, you must complete two objectives. The leader will choose which, so just follow the group. After those are complete, a final objective 
will be unlocked. Finish that and you are now on your way to the extraction point. Don't miss this part. It's a mega battle for tons of gear. You must extract to get your very important countdown credits. Most extract using the helicopter rope around 10 to 20 seconds left on the clock. Please don't be that doofus that hits the flare early. You will get about 158 credits per completion and upwards of 50 gear pieces per run, which take about 20 minutes. So you're going to do three 20 minute runs that should produce 474 countdown credits. You need 224 to buy an exotic cash. So this is enough to buy two more exotics. You now have five exotics, one from the SHD project, two from Summit and two from Countdown. And those three runs should have netted you about 150 items, give or take. All right, it's time to get sorting. Go through all your gear looking for any maxed rolls. Mark these as either favorites if they're ones going on your build or for donation if they're random for your library. Listen carefully, don't donate anything to your library until you assemble the three builds first. The following are what you want to save to your library. For each gear slot, you need a max weapon damage core, a max armor core, and a skill tier. And then you need crit chance, skill damage, crit damage, and headshot damage. For the chest talents, you need only these four right now. Kinetic momentum, focus, obliterate, and overwatch. For the backpack, you only need these three, bloodsucker, vigilance, and combined arms. For the assault rifle stats, you're gonna need assault rifle damage, health damage, damage to armor, and damage to targets out of cover. For assault rifle weapon talents, you need in sync, measured, and optimist. And what you equip is based on what you have at this stage. Notice no other weapons are listed and many talents are left off. This is intentional. The reason why is that in the beginning, your character is poor and resource starved. So if you start donating gear to weapons and talents that aren't an early priority or even good at all, you are taken away from resources you need to optimize your build. Mark the best assault rifle and shotgun you have. Mark as favorite any strikers that have max weapon damage cores, very high or max crits, headshot damage and skill damage. Mark as favorite any palisades pieces with skill damage and high armor or crits. Mark as favorite any palisades chess pieces with any of the key chess piece talents that we mentioned earlier. Mark as favorite any Brazos, Picaros holsters, whatever you got, any of them. Move everything else to your stash. Okay, now we're getting to the good part. We're gonna assemble these three builds and save them to your loadouts. So first we're gonna upgrade the countdown build. In the end, you will have four red damage cores and two blue armor cores. You're gonna prioritize weapon damage and crit chance on all the striker, armor and crit chance on palisades. You're gonna put on the Picaro's holster and you're gonna save this in your loadouts and name the build countdown. And so now I know we haven't talked about it much, but strikers gives you 15% weapon handling and 15% rate of fire. So really good. This is the best DPS gear set in the game. Here's Gamble is giving you a hundred stacks of amplified damage. And then the chest piece push Pushes that to 200 so 200 percent potential amplified damage and all you got to do is land shots to build stacks and then we got weapon damage core and i got crit damage and crit chance on my chest piece the backpack is the second piece and so that's going to unlock our weapon handling and i got weapon damage and crit chance and protection from elites on this and again, just get it as close to this as possible. This comes with the talent called risk management, pushing the amplified damage stacks from 0.65 to a whole 1%. And then we have the gloves. I got weapon damage and crit damage. That's the best I have right now. And then the knees, weapon damage and crit chance. All right, for the palisades. So this is our additional survivability. It has armor. I rolled crit chance on this and then crit damage and protection from elites. And then the holster is the Picaro's holster. It's got weapon damage, I rolled crit chance, and it's got some armor on there. It also comes with skill haste, which is a little helpful, but what we're after is that weapon damage armor combo. A quick look at my reviver hive. I got crappy uh, mods here, so it just has whatever. And then the shield, I put on just whatever you can. And then for the assault rifle, I'm running the carbine seven. I got this pretty early. 
it came nice and god rolled like that so assault rifle damage health damage damage to armor and then i put on measured again because measured doesn't require crits but you can also go optimus but i like the additional rpms so damage to armor nice reload for mods i got the 8x scope i got crit chance here and then i got stability and then i have plus 10 rounds i need to get the bigger mag that gives us plus 20 rounds so a little bit of ammo missing there and then for my shotgun is really crappy actually, but I'm just using it for stacks. So it's just fast and it's got a 20 round mag. That's all I need. I'm running survivalist. It should be all unlocked for you too at this stage. And then we're going to have the protection from elites. And then I have assault rifles selected here. Otherwise everything else is just filled out as you would want it to be. And then I'll show you stats, but they're not going to really matter at this point. You're just going to take what you can get, but we have 27% crit chance and 58% crit hit damage. Okay. So next let's take a look at your second build. This one's really important, really fun and very effective you're probably going to hold on to this build forever now remember my specialization isn't correct i haven't unlocked mine so this is your skill build for solo heroic or heroic and legendary group it'll work for just about anything so in the end you will have six skill tiers five on the build and one from the specialization and then you're going to have the one armor core so you're going to want yours with technician just remember i didn't want to buy the year run pass for my scratch account and again it's up to you but you do want technician here so none of the following gear pieces can overlap with the other builds because you're going to want to add skill tiers to all of these and that will mess up your other builds and it'll make it difficult to swap back and forth and you don't have the resources to keep changing things so you want four pieces of striker with skill damage or crit chance already on the piece ideally skill damage you're going to add skill tiers to all the pieces but the chest piece and you want palisades on your chest piece so you don't have to worry about getting another 100 stacks of striker ideally you want kinetic momentum as the talent and armor is okay here so your stats on the chest are ideally crit chance or skill damage or something like that but you're fine if you don't have the right secondary stats on the chest it's most important you get the brand and the talent right as well as the core so you're going to put on the picaro's holster and you want to make sure it has a skill tier ideally you have skill damage as one of the secondary stats on it and anything red there is a good backup option so you're going to put the capacitor exotic as your main weapon here any shotgun for your backup so you're going to want to equip the striker drone just make sure you have the best mods here which i don't have really any and then also the attack turret so the six skill tiers are going to give you a lot of power to your skills and then you're going to have 60 percent skill damage coming from the capacitor on stack and those skill tiers are also powering your capacitor as well as striker with 100 percent of amplified damage and faster rate of fire and weapon handling so your weapon is going to be very strong and a kinetic momentum is giving 15% more skill damage to each of your skills. So save this to your loadouts and name it skill build. So the third build is going to be your general DPS build. And I recommend it usually for the most difficult content in the game, like legendary. But the skill build will also work for legendary. So use whatever is in your comfort zone. But having a good DPS build is something that you're going to need. And there's some choices here. So I'm offering one of the strongest builds that you can have in the game early on. And then I'll give you a couple of options from there. So it's the same assault rifle with measured damage to armor. All the mods are the same as the countdown build. And I'm running that 8x scope, but it's more important on this build. Of course, we have four pieces striker, but we're not running the striker's chest now. Now we're running the Palisades chest that we farmed from countdown, and that's giving us 10% armor on kill. And then I'm running armor, armor regen, weapon handling, and crit chance. The talent is called focused. And so this is giving us 5% total weapon damage for every second we're aiming down scope up to 50 percent that's one of the strongest talents in the game even for assault rifles otherwise you want crit damage and crit chance for your stats a quick side note here is that there is a perfect version of this chest piece called the pristine example there's a good chance you can get this on day one from countdown i did and so even though it's for marksman rifles it's still an even better chest at putting out even more damage but i'm not running it here or recommending it because i don't want you to do any additional farming okay if you get that then you're going to want to put palisades as your holster your alternate for the chest piece if you're very uncomfortable with being in scope then just man up we're talking 30 percent headshot damage for crying out loud go ahead and run obliterate and to just try to put as many crits as you can on your build, including the mods up here. Okay, for the holster, I'm running another Precaro's holster. So just like we had on the other build, except this one's gonna have crit chance on it. So crit chance and armor. So blue and red is what you want this to look like. 
And then Striker is what you would expect it to be. These are the same pieces we were running earlier. So I got weapon damage and crit chance, weapon damage and crit chance. And both of these have protection from elites. And then weapon damage and crit damage and weapon damage and crit chance. Now for general content, you can go ahead and elect to put crit mods here instead of protection from elites. But as a new player, having a little bit of extra protection against those elites isn't a bad thing. Plus I'm running survivalist, so that's also adding to it. But ultimately, I don't recommend that you run survivalist for general gameplay. What I recommend you put here for heroic and legendary content is gunner. Gunner is going to help you with ammo, but also with armor on kill. Now, again, because I didn't buy the year one pass for an account that I'm going to basically blow up. I don't have this unlocked. Jesus, man. If I would have known you were going to repeat that statement this many times, I would have just bought it for you. What's another tourist's kidney? My girl Cassie is always good to buy. But as you can see here, you're gonna get 10% armor on kill. So make sure you equip it early, save it with it equipped. And that will give this build 20% armor on kill. So even better than what I'm showing you here. And now for skills, you're gonna wanna run the Reviver Hive again. That way when you get in trouble, you get picked up. And then the Crusader Shield, and I'll show you the stats. So I have basically 34% crit chance, which isn't horrible. And then 40% crit damage. So if you did wanna put on Obliterate, this would probably be about 55% more crit chance by swapping out all your mods on both your weapon and your gear. So either way, go with what you prefer. Just know that this is a pretty strong build and super helpful to be in scope in Legendary because those enemies play quite deep. Okay, so you're gonna save this build to your loadout and just name it DPS. Okay, now it's time to roll up all the stats on the builds, all three of them. So this is the final upgrade push. Add all the marked gear for donation in your stash to your library. When you do this, it will destroy the item. So don't load any unnecessary stats or talents that aren't critical to these three builds. Remember, you have the reference list and the extra gear is critical for your resources at a time when you are very poor. And don't accidentally donate any of your equipped gear. Marking it favorite helps prevent this. Try not to donate any named items unless they have one of the key stats mentioned in the list and are max rolled or very close to max rolled. Once all your max stats and talents are added to your library, go through each of your three builds and upgrade the stats using the tinkering station menu. I created a whole guide for this, so I recommend watching that before you take this step. If the piece has the correct minor attribute and a low core stat, then prioritize the core. If it has a max core stat and the wrong minor attribute, change the minor to the correct stat. If both stats are correct and both are low, prioritize the core by maximizing it. For the skill build, the most vital thing is that each piece has a skill tier, except for the chest. Tinkering is a heavy cost on the E credits, so it's possible to run out of another material like steel or polycarbonate or another basic. So use your watch and caches, but don't tap into the junk gear if you can prevent it. If for any reason your resources get tight, prioritize the skill build first. You're already good to go for countdown and the skill build will work for solo and legendary if you're limited to choosing just one. If you need more resources at this point in time, here is a resource run that will only cost you a couple of minutes. You're gonna fast travel to the South Dark Zone entrance, jog over to this building and open everything in sight. Just follow the path. There's no real wrong turn here. Then go to the circle safe house and follow my path here through to the solar farm. This simple routine will net you a ton of resources and gear. And I suggest doing it daily as a noob. After that, you should have everything you need to kick butt. Except for skill. The human forgot to mention you need skill. That's it. Simple, right? It's the most direct path to be able to run with the big dogs. And you are ready to take on Legendary with a team so you can get one more exotic. The sixth exotic. Let's put it to the test. I did a random matchmake and annoyingly the guy had special ammo on. Out of all the directives. If the build is good, it needs to be able to take on all directives. I want to let you know that overall feeding your library is one of the most important things you can do early on. So countdown is going to be a big early focus for you. You are also going to continue the countdown routine to perfect these three builds, including farming for better gear mods and more exotic caches. Load of crap. There's only one build you need in the Division 2.
You also need to continue your blueprints grind by completing level three control points and higher. You need to do this on at least challenging difficulty, but the builds are set up so that you can take on heroic difficulty. So just go with whatever's best for you. And this unlocks just more than weapon attachments. It's also gonna unlock blueprints for resources critical to optimizing your gear. And as a side benefit, you will be getting more basic resources that are vital for tinkering. So you can do countdown to complete your library, upgrade to three builds, get exotic caches and gear mods. You can do control points for blueprints and then you can do daily and weekly projects for XP, exotics and resources and bounties for e-credits. This video will help break down the daily and weekly projects for you. So the legendary day one run with the build we made on day one in less than three hours, I took top kills and damage for the team and got my exotic reward. It didn't go and notice that the small watch dude took the spot as well. Of course, I'm not actually new and much of this is easier for me because I have done these missions many times. And you will too, and get better and better at them. But for now, know confidently you have the right tools on day one to explore and eventually master the game, whatever your watch size is. If you made it this far in the video, you're now ready to receive the critical details for early in-game success. But listen closely. Okay, head over to Anaya and purchase the stash and resource sharing capabilities. This whole time, we have been preparing for a second character to be godly in New York. Now create a second character and boost it to New York and get to the Haven base of operations post haste. This should take around 15 minutes. Skip through the stories. Don't worry about resources. Just get there. All that junk we've been putting in your stash, move it to your newly created characters inventory. As you now continue to farm countdown with your main character, continue to offload all junk into your stash. Between the stash and your second character, you will be able to hold 450 items. By doing this now, you are putting yourself in the position to create three additional characters fast and easy using a brand new updated method for 2024. We call these extra characters mules and use them for additional resources, more exotics and stash space. Before we didn't do this until we had a sizable watch, but now we recommend you do this as early as possible. But this subject needs a whole additional video so just know your new character is going to be using those junk pieces for resources to turn themselves into gods from the get-go so they can burn through New York to get their watch fast and easy without needing another player to carry them through which is the old way to do it quickly for example named items that we put in there sell for about double than that of high-end gear next watch this video and make this XP farm build once you have the build start XP farming every week to get your watch to level 1000. And because you're gonna have more characters soon, XP farming on your main opens up more passive income from the watch. Every fifth HD level on your main character is giving you a scavenge point on your other characters to buy resources. And you're sharing those resources back to your main character to use. This way you can create quadruple the scavenge points to optimize your three key builds and beyond. So now I'm gonna load you up with a punch list on what you need to do next. First, these are very important videos to watch at this stage. Take a screenshot, links down below, human. Why did the division agent bring a ladder into the dark zone? To reach those high level loot drops, but mostly to avoid being shot in the back. Thank you for hanging out with me today. My name is Tuxedo Bandito, that's Tito Bandito. Who else? And this was another episode of The Division 2. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The Division 2. And if you like builds like this, check out the recommended video I have here for you. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. Follow me. I get it.